aliens are liars and deceivers. Right. He says they are known to be liars and deceivers. Now, he's not the only one that says that. If you look at the comparative material, you can build up quite a case. <laughs> the Gnostics said exactly the same thing about the archonic mind par parasites. They are liars and deceivers. And um, Michael Harner, who was a key figure in the shamanic revival of the 70s, was one of the first people to go to the Amazon and take ayahuasca. And in his ayahuasca vision, he saw an Anunnaki or archontic type dragon figures who flew in through the sky in a kind of canoe. And they talked to him in his uh, uh, ayahuasca vision. And they told him, well, we created the human race. Uh, we are the dragon masters. And we seated you on this planet and everything. And he was, mind was blown. And when he sobered up and he had his briefing afterwards with the old ayahuasca shaman he said you know i can't believe it i met these uh these alien dra dragon like beings and they told me that they're our creators and the old shaman laughed and he said they're liars they tell everybody that <laughs> well it's a good point i mean they wish right why should we trust yeah. their accounts just because they That's say right. it, you know and so what i'm saying is if credo matwa has said that the chidari are liars and deceivers and this reportage or testimony is supported by other cases, and there are even others I could cite, then why does he believe the story about the moon? Why does he believe? Because that story comes from them. Mm. So, you know, I think that it's, it's a lack of critical scrutiny is very, very serious here. The lack of critical scrutiny regarding these beings and that they have come, they have told us that they are lords of the universe. I've pointed out that the, that the, Anunnaki script of Sitchin is a disinformation. It's a lie. Mm. It's a lie planted in the human mind to make us think that we are a slave species. The whole slave species scenario is a lie. And the first people who pointed that out were the Gnostics. And I am taking up the torch and reiterating that message. It's a very good point, I think. And, and it also, and, and at the same time, I guess what I can. I can kind of understand. I'm not saying that the, that that this account that they're retelling or, or so is not intentional in that sense, but I can also feel that from the point of view where they're coming from, if they've had such an, a realization, either you know literally, like let's say Kreta Mutva, or I guess scholarly to some degree in terms of Sitchin, then uh, I guess that they feel that this is at least a source which is, from their point of view, a higher source, if you know what I mean, John, and therefore. It is taken literally and not run through the same critical filters that we would uh, do with another human being, let's say. There you go. There you go. It's not run through the critical filters. And one of the great dangers of any contact with these ar archontic beings, uh, which are psychic uh, shapeshifters who can take various forms, I believe that the Anunnaki, the Archons, and the uh, Chidari are basically uh, shape shifting versions of the same mind parasites. One of the dangers is indicated by the Gnostics, who also called them the rulers and authorities. That's another translation for the name Archon. And uh, there's a huge warning in that. Uh, basically, don't listen to the authorities mm. or anyone who presents themselves as an authority, especially when it's just an authority on the supernatural, you know, and so when we take them for authorities, when we go to the Sumerian tablets, and I think Sitchin's reading of them is very dubious, but let's say that they do contain this story mm -hmm. of a genetic intervention. Well, just because something is written on clay tablets 3,500 years ago doesn't mean it's true. That's right. Okay? It's no more different than something written in the Wall Street Journal. Come on. <laughs> you know? And so uh, we better be very careful about authorities. One of the great breakthroughs that is happening right now is that the power of the authorities is being shattered by the inpouring of the Gaian mind into the human mind. What happens in Gaia's correction, which began on March 19th, 2011, if you want to put a specific date to it, is going to last for three years until March of 2014. It's going to happen very, very fast. And in this time, what will become evident, what becomes evident in many aspects of life is that somehow it's like the veil falling off your eyes, the scales falling away from your eyes. 
Many people inexplicably can have the same experience that what they previously took on authority, whether it be from science or from a channeler, suddenly falls apart and some more beautiful, self-evident reality breaks in. It's going to be a breaking in to the human mind. Mm. The divine Sophia, goddess, is breaking in to the human mind. That is her intervention. And we can actually observe and verify how that's happening. It's not a fantasia that I'm proposing. I'm asking you to play along with me here, folks. You know, mm. But I'm asking you to bring critical scrutiny to what you're told and look at the evidence of your experience. There is no authority greater than the evidence of your own experience. The control of the the archons, the archonic, archontic matrix uh, that you talk about would obviously be aided quite a bit if uh, at the outset we had the disadvantage of, uh, of, of, of thinking that they were our creators. In that sense, we would automatically, on square one, if you will, be subservient to them because they made us, you know, in that sense. Why do you think, John, it is that so frequently then the, the, the communication seems to come through, uh, you know, the ayahuasca ritual or something like that? There is usually a communication happening at those points and usually all kinds of interesting, weird and, and uh, you know, strange um, stories are being given to people or experiences, obviously, that, that they're having. But... Often, very, very often, they seem to be in this realm. They seem to be able to get through or communicate to, to human beings. And in some regard, it's always, almost also like many people's critical ability. The, the firewall, if you will, actually falls totally apart in that uh, frame of mind. And people totally believe what they're shown or, or, or told, basically. Well, there is a firewall, and the Gnostics also talked about this a lot. They talked about immunity to the alien uh, presence. They didn't mean that you block out the alien presence to the extent that you deny its existence. The Gnostic seers of the mysteries were profoundly and acutely aware of the psychic, extra-dimensional presence of these mind parasites. They were the first ones who observed them and left us a record of their behavior, of their modus operandi, of their uh, two primary forms which are the draconic or reptilian form and the neonate or embryonic form, like an aborted or premature fetus. You know, this information, profiling these mind, in these intruders, is in the Gnostic text. So they were acutely aware of them, but they were also acutely aware of how to ward them off, dispel them, and put them in their place. And we have a very weak immunity as a species now. We have a weak immunity to psychic intrusion. The reason for that is because we are sexually very degenerate and that we have lost, uh, it's largely due to sexual practices uh, that due to a long and sad story, which I can't go into right now, but since the cults of the goddess were overthrown and since sacred sexuality was overcome and replaced by patriarchy and the rule of theocrats or men, uh, we've had a, a, a down spiraling of the quality of sexual experience in our species. Now, when the quality of sexual experience is high, that is to say, when we have the ability to experience with each other sexually, uh, sexual ecstasy and rapture, the freedom and joy and the bliss of sex for its own sake, not for procreative purposes, but for the beauty and pleasure of the sexual act, then we have a high psychic immunity. Good, honest, clean, voluptuous sex produces a high psychic immunity. And the pagans had that in their world. They had a healthy sexual attitude. The, 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 the sick uh, and pathological sexuality that has emerged on this planet over the last 2,000 years is, of course, due to the Abrahamic religions, to the uh, condemnation of sex, mm. until you get down to something as wicked as the sexual apartheid of, of, uh, of Islam. You know, and so part of the the reason why we have a very poor immunity is that there are other reasons as well. Uh, lack of contact with the earth, lack of having your bare feet on the earth, lack of being in nature, breathing the air and, and, and breathing the water and lack of absorbing the natural elements of the earth also lowers our immunity to these psychic intrusions. Therefore, it's understandable that when people venture out of their normal mind frame, 
into a psychic or supernatural journey by ayahuasca or any other influence, that they're going to be facing forces that they don't have, that they're with a weak firewall, as you put it. Right. But the Gnostics taught how to build up that firewall and how to ensheath yourself in a envelope of organic light by raising Kundalini. And in fact, Kundalini is the main weapon against these archonic intruders. You can actually zap them with Kundalini. It's very easy to kill archons and very easy to drive away and kill predatory ETs. I've wiped out many of them. You know, and people ought to be taught psychic self-defense in regarding to these entities because uh, there is a great risk that uh, they will encounter them. But the fact that they are encountered in these altered states uh, doesn't mean that they are masters of the universe and doesn't mean that we can uh, allow them to tell us things without applying critical scrutiny. Furthermore, the best foundation for critical scrutiny and the best foundation for taking a stand in relation to these entities is the Sophianic vision story, because that story explains who they are. And it tells us what their role is, it tells us what the threat they pose is, and it also tells us how to confront them and how to ward them off. This is contained in the, the first apocalypse of James. It's very clearly a, 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 an exchange between a Gnostic teacher and his student where the Gnostic teacher describes uh, alien abduction, a perfect description of an alien abduction scenario. Hmm. And then he says, listen, all you have to do when you stand in the presence of those beings is to tell them that you are of the race of the divine Sophia, that you know your origin, and that they are not your parents. And they will dissolve. They are powerless because they can only operate through a lie. So we're in a very desperate state with these archonic beings now because over through religious indoctrination and mind programming, as I explain in not in his image, there have been centuries of the breakdown of the human mind leading us to a pathological state where we are really, in a sense, some people are walking about possessed <laughs> by these archonic parasites. Yeah. And who, yeah, and who are those people? Unfortunately, they are the people who are largely in charge of our society, in charge of the military and the government. Many of them are in the entertainment business. Many of them are in the media business. That's right. And they are, uh, are contically infected pathological predators. And we as a species, if we want our species to survive, and if we want to have some kind of life and society worth living in on this planet, the moment has come to face those predators. And the Sophia myth also gives us a framework in which to do that. So it's, it's, it's an invaluable tool for orienting ourselves to this momentous shift that is now happening on the planet. There's nothing like it, really. I, I, wanna, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we have so much else to talk about. But sure. the, the Abrahamic suppression of sex that you mentioned. I've been interested in, the, interested in that as well. It, it connects with so many other things that has to do with the uh, the Abrahamic religions and, and, and how they've gotten such incredible strong foothold. You know, the more you research, it's, it's, it's incredibly prominent and, and, and uh, you can see the way that they've spread throughout well, obviously Europe, you know, earlier on, and, 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 and the, if you will, the invasion, I've made this point before on this recently on the program, that the invasions of, of countries we can see now, like Libya and, and, and Egypt and Yemen, spreading yeah. Syria, etc. Yeah, just and a, Scandinavia, 